have a great time. We're going to go ahead and get started with uh, a little roundtable discussion. Is that all right with y'all? A little roundtable discussion? Let's get our guests on up here. John McGinnis, where are you? John McGinnis, ladies and gentlemen. John McGinnis was a... We've been playing, uh, jun we've known each other since junior golf. He was born in Georgia, grew up in North Carolina. If you listen to any radio at all, you hear his show every day with his partner, Brian Katrick. Brian, BK, come on up. Two of the finest people I know right here. John McGinnis and Brian Katrick. Go on down there to the end, John. You need any help getting in that chair? Yeah, I own a yoga studio. Brian needs some clapping. See, they the radio they already that clapped. They do, nobody ever claps for them. Right? They already clapped for me. Oh, they did. Yes, yeah, my mom clapped by for me. Thanks, diet mom. Mountain Dew. You never see him without a diet Mountain Dew. John likes regular. He's drinking ultra, but normally he drinks cheap wine. He likes that wine out of a box. But uh, glad to have you guys. Love you guys. That's our good friend Charlie Reimer right there. <laughs> <laughs> We've done a lot of work together over the years and. John's all over. He's every tour, TV, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I, you never thought you'd have a real job, did you, John? It, you know, I took one of those uh, harassment uh, seminars last week. Yeah, I and better it was, and it get was, one of those. It was the first time I ever felt like I had a real job. Yeah. Did it, did it change in you know, where you operate? You know, the thing is, we work remotely. Yeah. Who the hell am I going to harass? <laughs> You're going to harass somebody. He didn't take the whole seminar. We, we need some adult supervision up here. So uh, we have Chantel McCabe for that, the lovely Chantel McCabe. Great friend from a long time in uh, TV. Met her at Golf Channel. She's busy doing everything. Covers all kinds of crazy sports. She's married. I thought she got married this year. She got married last year. Chantel McCabe, ladies and gentlemen. Chantel finished third in the Miss New Hampshire concert one year. Or, or not concert, uh, uh, what do you call that, beauty pageant? Yes. She finished third. Can you imagine how pretty one and two were? Uh-huh. Yeah, finished third. Oh, my gosh. John never finished in a beauty contest pageant. Miss, was it Miss, I'm butchering this, what was it, Miss New Hampshire? That's it. That's it. You said it. Nothing more to it, Miss you were New Hampshire. You were third or second? Uh, it, it's irrelevant. I didn't win. She was third. We've had a lot of discussion over this. I believe that second runner-up. <laughs> right. If for any reason the winner cannot perform her duties. That's true. <laughs> I did, it, there was no, um, what, what's the, the crazy movie with the pageant girls? There you go. There were no moments like that. So no worries. I'll let them have it. What, what was your question? You get a question, right? What was your question? They always asked me something political, and I always well, nailed it. That's not good it. for you. Oh, no, I nailed it. I was the only one well, brave enough to tell you. them how it really was. Yeah, you nailed it for you, but not for them. <laughs> right. They yeah. got, that's accurately said. <laughs> yeah, it, it exactly. Was always some, I never got the fluff ones. Like, if you could name a book your own biography, what would it be? I would never get those, and I would, be, I would get very detailed, thought-provoking questions. How I got this way. <laughs> oh, I thought you were asking me the question. Yeah, uh, that's we need we need more than five minutes. You only have two minutes to answer, so that's enough about beauty pageants. <laughs> wow, we went don't down you, a rabbit hole I wasn't expecting. Don't you know we could go on and on about this, them? Though. This this crazy thought just came into my head. Oh God, HR. Yeah, John McGinnis was working on a book one time. You know what the working title of it was? Women do fart and other things you need to know before you get married. Oh that was God. before his first divorce. What it's a great not, BK says title. it's not true. Thank you for hanging on for the ladies. <laughs> All right. We need some more adult supervision up here. Dan Rappaport. Dan, come on up. Dan's with uh, Barstool Sports. Charlie, he actually Dan. finished second in Miss New Hampshire that year. <laughs> what a coincidence. What's that? Hey, wait, this Everybody. is Dan's first time. This is not a warm welcome we're giving him. Sheesh. No, that was a great welcome. He finished second in the Ricky Michigan initiation. Yeah. Runner up. Yeah. Runner up. Big week so, for me. You know, New Hampshire's the granite state. Yeah. It's the live free or die state as well. First How can it be both? I can go on. What's the state animal? 
A muskrat? Really? No, it's a Fisher cat. You, you know, <laughs> you know, if you, and we're going to see this as we go forward. They're going to say the great state of Kansas. And they're going to say that about every state at the conventions. And it just can't be true. They're all great. Right. They great. can't they're be true. But New Hampshire is a great state. And you know why? Because there Chantel is a liquor store. Third. There is a liquor store at every border because they have the cheapest liquor taxes in the Northeast. There aren't taxes. But they're the cheapest taxes. Uh, there aren't taxes at there all. There are no sales tax. They don't tax liquor. We'd all live there if it wasn't so damn Road cold. trip. <laughs> Let's load her up. <laughs> How you doing, Dan? I'm good. I'm very good. Um, this is your second year playing, correct? First year. First, first year. year. We were here. We did a video series here last uh, around this time last year. So yeah. second time in Myrtle Beach, the first time playing in the uh, the World Am. Where'd you play today? So it's a funny story. Oh. We like those. He went to the wrong place. By funny story, I mean uh, our flight got canceled yesterday. So missed the tea time this morning, which is tough. Tough way to start a tournament by missing the tea time. But we played. Uh, we went out to Grand Dunes. This afternoon, and played a little golf out there, filmed some stuff. So, unfortunately, I missed it this morning, but there was nothing I could do. It was the, the flight was canceled. I told the, I told them they were like, "What do you mean?" I said the flight's canceled. There's nothing I can do. So, it just sets the stage for a huge comeback. That's, really, you know what yeah. it, yeah, I wanted to give myself a bit of a handicap. Yeah, no one has ever missed his first <laughs> tee time and then still come back to win the golf tournament. No, yet. never has. That's, that's not true. No. Yet, yet. Jim, Jim Furyk missed a tee time. And still won the FedEx Cup. Won the FedEx Cup. He didn't win that week. That's true. He didn't win the World Am. Dan's yeah. going to do it. Interesting point. Listen, there's a first for Dan, everything. Dan, I'm going to go ahead and quest your question your dedication. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got a spot in the World Am. <laughs> I mean, any of you guys out there miss your tea time today? No. I mean, what? <laughs> Put me on the spot. Look. Are you just not all in? Is that what the deal is? I, I, I am all in. I'm completely all in. Unfortunately, you know, mother-in-law turned 60 years old. Something I just had to, something I had to do. If the airlines didn't let me down, it was a perfect plan. I was gonna, you know, kiss the ring with the mother-in-law and then fly down here and play golf in the morning, but the weather gods had it out for me. Do what with so, the mother-in-law? What's that? Do what with your mother-in-law? We were, I was gonna kiss the ring. I was gonna. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, so what in the hell wrong. is wrong with you? You put your <laughs> mother-in-law ahead of golf? I just got married in June, so it's all new to me. And I'm, I'm on the you side got, you got some training to do. I do. <laughs> I do. You know the best part about this conversation is our mothers mothers in law are the same age. Okay. All right. So here's uh, spinning this forward to the Myrtle Beach Classic, which is coming up, and I know we're going to talk about it. Uh, you may not know this, Dan. Senior Tour Championship that, that Gary McCord won at the Dunes Club. 31 players in that field. Dave Eichelberger was up in New York, missed his flight. Wow. You missed the Pro-Am, you're disqualified. Really? Only 31 players, you want to get down here. Yeah. Yeah. Dave goes out to the airport, it was either Newark or LaGuardia, gets in a cab, tells him, guess where we're going? No way. 19 hours or no something way. like that. Ouch. If you can just get here, it's last place, it's going to be worth it. Yeah, that's oh right. My he tells him. They get in a limo, 19 hours. He looks at his watch, he feels like they're gonna make it. They get to about Wilmington, okay. and he's doing well. They're gonna make it. True story. They hit traffic around Wilmington. Starts to slow him down. We, this is not, we don't have, everybody doesn't have cell phones. Right. right. He makes it to the intersection, it's not even the intersection, right? 17, where the golf course hits 17, right there where the pirate voyage, voyage is. Tells the guy, look, just stop here, go to the clubhouse. He gets out of the car on the side of the road, jumps the fence to get onto the Dunes property. Wow. Finds the first official he can find, says, hey, I'm here. Tell him Michael Berger's here. Makes it by the skin of his teeth. Interestingly enough, he never saw his bags ever again. <laughs> That's dedication. He, he made all that up, BK, made all of that wow. up. You know, he said it with he, he had me. I, he had me until he talked about the pirate's revenge or something <laughs> like right. that. Pirate voyage. Pirate voyage. Yes. Hey, can I just say, yeah. I made my tea time in tout with three girls as I drove us all and our clubs 
in an exhibition max pulling out of that parking garage not hitting a soul or anything that could have gotten into the obscurity of backing up at, out of the parking spot we made our tea time we were even 20 minutes early three girls getting ready plus me that in and of itself See, that's dedication. This is what you need. I, I need some grit. I've obviously lost grit in my old age. <laughs> How old are you, Dan? I'm 28. That's why our mothers-in-law being the same age is funny. I like that you went back to that. That was, yeah. that was very nice. You wanted to justify that. Was, somebody was Close sneering. The Close the loop. Somebody was sneering. And that's I, good. And, it, and it's true. <laughs> that one is true. BK, you brought it up. How about the PGA Tour coming to uh, the golf capital of the world, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, Woo! next year? I uh, have been uh, out uh, doing a series for Play Golf Myrtle Beach. We're uh, visiting 66 golf courses. I've done 49 so far. And I can tell you, locally here, the folks are absolutely fired up. You mentioned the Senior Tour Championship. It's been at the Dunes. It's been at TPC Myrtle Beach. We had it. Watch us all east for a few years, an LPGA event. But... Getting a PGA Tour event really means a lot to this golf community. And, John, I, I know you've been out there and seen it. Tell us a little bit about Dunes Club and how you think it will hold up to the tour. Well, first of all, it's going to look so good on television. Uh, the way that it, it wanders through the marsh, uh, the drone shots, the blimp shots are, are going to be incredible. Uh, in terms of playability, uh, it's a world-class golf course. People ask, what's the best golf course at Myrtle Beach? And you hem and haw and say the TPC course, but it's always the Dunes Club. It's, I mean, it's, it's uh, from what I understand, they're adding a few tees. Uh, the, the way the golf course winds around itself, it's going to be great for spectators. And, oh, by the way, I don't know if you've noticed, uh, they should be okay on volunteers. There's a few retirees around here. <laughs> I fielded a lot of calls the day that was announced. How can I help? We're going to have plenty of folks coming out to help. There's no doubt about that. So it's something that the community is really, really excited about. And uh, it, it's uh, fitting when you're the world's uh, golf capital of the world that you have a PGA Tour event. So a lot of fun uh, coming our way. Hey, Dan, i got to ask you, the first time I had a chance to meet you, you're a little bit younger um, than three of us. I'm not going to get into her age. She's already giving me the evil eye over there. But did you get a chance to watch any of the uh, Tour Championship and the FedEx Cup over the weekend? And, and I'd like to sort of get your perspective on, you know, do you think the format is working, the staggered start, all of that? I mean, is, is, is you think it's working? No, I don't. Um, look, I think the, uh, right now the, the Tour Championship is trying to serve two purposes. It's trying to serve as the end of the FedEx Cup and and – fairly settle a competition that lasts the whole year, and it's trying to be entertaining in and of itself. And I would argue that it's, it's not really serving either purpose. If you look at the, you know, the last couple years, guys who have won the FedEx Cup aren't necessarily the player of the year. So you've got a situation where John Rahm finished like 18th, and Scotty Scheffler finished sixth. So it's hard to say that when John Rahm wins four times and wins the Masters, or Scotty Scheffler, you know, sets records with his ball striking that they weren't in the top five players of the year. So if it's not really settling the score of the season-long competition, it's at least got to be entertaining in and of itself. But I think with the stag staggered scoring, you have the potential for a week like this one where Victor Hovland played great, and he deserved to win. You know, he played him incredible the week before, but on Sunday he had a, a six-shot lead to begin with and never got closer than three. And if there were no starting strokes – he and Shoffley would have been tied, and they both shot 62, and they're both playing incredible, and the, the format kind of robbed, robbed us of this show. So if you got to do one of the two things. you got to be fair to the season-long competition, or it's got to be entertaining in and of itself, and I don't think it's either one. So I think they should make the, the back half of it a match play tournament. Yeah. I think with the match play is going away, it sounds like, at least for a little bit, uh, in Austin, it's not going to be there anymore. Most people play match play when they're playing with their friends. It's a great format, and I think having the Tour Championship be a match play event would give it an identity uh, past what it has right now, which is kind of this weird scoring format that kind of makes sense but kind of doesn't. So, look, I think about these things way too long and way too detailed, more than any normal person should. So it's probably just fine, and I'm sure the ratings are great. 
But as I, you know, I live and, and breathe this stuff, I just wish it was, I think there's more that could be done. Yeah, uh, strong, uh, strong, uh, strong answer, well thought out, thank you. Uh, the two of us did the radio coverage of the final match of the match play when Tiger uh, beat um, Stort Sink on the 11th hole, and we had two hours of radio to fill at that point. Um, so match play doesn't always solve yeah, these no, problems. I mean, there's definitely like a, a benefits and, and potential negatives to it. Sure. I, I just think you know, you'd have consolation matches going on that would all be to settle the score in the FedEx Cup. You know, there is definitely the potential for a wipeout like that, and I, I get it. There's no perfect answer. I just feel like right now it's kind of a, I'm not sure anyone really knows what to make of it. And Kevin Sutherland could win it again. And yeah. that, he ruins everything. Well, I, what I would do is have it where... I like Kevin Sutherland. He's keep, a nice guy. Keep the stack, not just make it single elimination. You'd keep the staggered scoring. And then after two rounds, you'd chop it to the top eight. So the top eight would make it into a match play bracket. And then you play Saturday and Sunday. You'd play, you know, one match in the morning, one match in the afternoon, one match in the morning, one match in the afternoon on Sunday. And it would just be the top eight guys. And you'd keep the staggered scoring. So if you're leading the FedEx Cup, you'd have to really make a mess in two rounds to fall out of the top eight. Yeah, I don't mind it if we're going to go back to two trophies. Because here's trophies. the thing, we also don't play match play all year long. So how are you going to tell me that that's your season-long yeah. champion when we do something for two days that we haven't done all year? So I think you're right. It's trying to serve two masters. Yeah. It's not serving either one. I liked two trophies. Yeah, two trophies that doesn't bother me. And I think, and Rory said this, that he kind of gave off the uh, impression that they're going to put more money into the – more money into the season-long competition, like the, the end of the FedEx Cup and the regular season, because that's probably a better indicator. This year it would have been, you know, Scheffler was number one, Rom was number two. Maybe put some more money in that, and then have the FedEx Cup be its own, like, entity. For those that are grumbling about two trophies, we all remember the scene of Tiger coming up 18, winning the Tour Championship. I mean, that was probably one of the coolest scenes we've ever seen until he won the Masters again the next year. But that year when he did that, Justin Rose won the FedEx Cup. Tiger won the Tour Championship, two trophies. Yeah, that was a really cool uh, day with, with at East Lakes, a special place to me when I was at Georgia Tech. That was our home course. And uh, to see Tiger to coming Tech. down 18, all the folks behind, it was really cool. Speaking of really cool stuff, Chantel, uh, you, you've covered golf a lot. You've covered other sports. Uh, all of us, when we go to a golf tournament, get a chance to go behind the scenes and see some really cool stuff. A lot of things that you know folks just don't see. When you, have, in particular, you go to a major, you know what all is happening in a major. I mean, people have no idea what's going on behind the scenes. Ch Chantel, what what has been your favorite event to cover uh, from a behind the scenes point of view? Well, that's a hard question to answer because I think if people immediately assume that a major championship is going to be what would be obvious, but we work really long, hard hours. I mean, the three of us will work PGA Tour radio together for some majors, and I've covered Stanley Cups, I've covered World Series, and it's really the moments that pull at your heartstring, like first-time winners, like when Michael Kim won uh, for the first time at the John Deere, still hasn't won since. Uh, the emotional relationships that you make, like to me, these people that we travel with 30 weeks a year become your family members, like some of these guys, like you have when we, when we worked for Morning Drive and those grueling hours. Like to me, those are the most fulfilling and that's why I do it, not because I get to shoot the shit with Brooks Kepka before I interview him after the third round of the Masters uh, when he's moody and I have to figure out how to manage his ego and how specifically to ask him a question so you actually get an answer and he doesn't try to cop out because anyone who's ever watched Brooks Kepka do an interview know that, knows that that's his MO. But actually, I just had the opportunity to spend three hours, um, one of them with a Q&A with Ally for the Ally Challenge last week with Jack Nicklaus. Um, and I know him from covering the PNC Challenge and he and his sons or even grandsons would play and it would be very brief. Um, you know, a lot of the bigger time players, you don't get those intimate moments with that you do with some of the others. But uh, we spent two hours after the fact because we were in a rain delay and waiting for things to take place. And uh, it was me, Jack Nicholas, and Barbara 
for two hours just talking about their grandbabies, where Barbara would find different golf clubs or different memorabilia golf towels around the house, and she'd be like, Jack, why is this in the bathroom? And so getting to experience moments like that, I mean, I, I get chills talking about it because there are so few people who will ever get to have those kinds of conversations with them. So it's really nothing on camera or behind the scenes at a significant event, but it's the relationships and moments that, uh, I mean, if you look at the Rolodex that all of us on this stage have, a lot of people would be envious of, a lot of those names. I actually text Justin Thomas and said, hey, I have never spent this much time with Jack. I know he can be moody at times if he hasn't had his ice cream sandwich yet, which of course, then we had a whole conversation about what's the best ice cream sandwich, which why would we be talking about that? Well, right, because everybody knows it's Mayfield. <laughs> Arguable. Uh, but I text Justin Thomas and said, hey, I am actually a little bit nervous about talking with Jack for this long. And so give me a good icebreaker question for him that he'll know came from you and I can slide that in. And so if it weren't for the relationships of building up year after year being out there where sometimes there's even stories where we know things going on behind the scenes, whether that be with family members and you never want to make that public because you could say, oh, does that interfere with journalistic integrity? at times, but you have to be the best judge of how to manage those relationships because you know you're going to see those people over and over again, and you want to be able to make sure that they are respectful and confident in you. So yeah. it was Jack. Cool. I'm sorry, yeah. Longer, yeah. it was Jack. The other option is to just give up journalistic integrity. <laughs> Sell out. Uh, uh, yeah, I, that's what we've done, and it's worked <laughs> out just fine for us. Mm. I am fighting the fight, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Trying. Sheesh. Good for As you. a millennial, yeah. leave me alone. <laughs> you, got, you guys, I'm going to be sensitive in how I ask this question to some extent, but um, the whole Live Golf PGA Tour thing is sort of confusing, right? They were enemies. Now they're on the same page. I, I, I call my folks and say, hey, what's going on? When are we going to get realigned? You know, when, when's the whole world of golf coming back together? What's it going to look like? You know, so, so, I mean, are we ever going to get back on track? I mean, there's just so much going on in the world of golf. I mean, what, 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 do, you, what do you guys, where are you at? I mean, can you even answer the question? <laughs> it's, it's, it's 728. We're done at 730. <laughs> <laughs> Make it quick. Take it. Yes. <laughs> BK? We have no idea. We are back together. I can't wait to see what they agree upon. Yeah, and, and neither can anybody else. <laughs> right. I mean, nobody, nobody really has any idea what's going on. This is like negotiating with my ex-mother-in-law. <laughs> you just never really know how it's going to turn out, but you keep your guard up the whole time. <laughs> Hell of an answer. We'll end on that. Yeah. I, I think... I think they're all working toward the same thing in a general sense. So I think eventually, yes, will be my, my diplomatic answer. I have a bold prediction. Yes. Maybe it's not so bold, but I just feel like the writing is on the wall, and maybe I have given up my journalistic integrity when I say that, to me, when people were saying, oh, Liv's never going to work, they're never even going to have an event, oh, well, where are we now? So you can take a U-turn and see you later. They're out of business. They, well, no, no, they they're are. very much still in the media. However, um, I think that there is going to be a stronger global tour. However that looks, however Liv's involved, I think there is a demand and this necessity for a stronger global tour, and that includes all of these PGA tour stops, which we are selfish. We all like to have the community support and we obviously enjoy having everything in mostly all of our time zones in the United States, but I have a suspicious feeling that that's going to change. I, I think she's 100% right about that. I think it's been really interesting for me. I'm a big soccer fan as well, and they're dealing with the Saudi question big time right now. Yeah. They've signed Neymar, the Brazilian player. Uh, Cristiano Ronaldo is, is playing there in Saudi Arabia net right now, and, and the European teams are kind of having the same thing happen that the PGA Tour ha had last year where Someone's coming and offering them a lot more money, and a lot of the guys are taking it, and they don't really know what to do. So it's not just golf that's dealing with this question. All I know, John, is if they're playing for the kind of money when you and I were playing, and they are now, I'd have tried a lot damn harder. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, I think that I might have exceeded all possible potential 
<laughs> just to be the worst player fully vested in the PGA Tours retirement program. <laughs> You're there. We'll finish with this. Talk about the money. I, a lot of people talk about, you know, I don't, I don't play for money. <laughs> yeah, that's, you know, yeah, in 1970, you, you could have said that. But if you look at Jack Nichols, Arnold Palmer, Gary Player combined, their career earnings, those three players combined, I think is $11.2 million. Victor Hovland won $18 million for four days' work. That's a lot of money, folks. They say it's not about the money, but it's about the money. I can tell you that. Hey, appreciate y'all stopping by. We got a little fun thing coming up. Are you smarter than a fifth grader? In the meantime, uh, thanks to uh, Dan Rappaport, Chantel McCabe, Brian Katrick, and uh, John McGinnis. You guys have a great time here at the 40th World Am. Appreciate it.